Hello there and welcome to the Sea Butters channel. Today we're taking a look at our new ESXi virtualization server that we are building. To take advantage of ESXi we are using this awesome little mini ITX board. A cool thing about this board, it's the X10 SDV TLN4F. Uh, the cool thing about it is that it has an 8 core Xeon underneath this little shield. That's 45 watts, but 8 cores, 16 threads uh, at once. Uh, or with hyper threading, it appears to have 16 cores, uh, which is really neat for virtualization, especially. It also has, move it around to the back here, it has. 10 gigabit ports, which was a must for this build. That's kind of the reason behind all this. I needed to support something that had a little bit more memory. I've used ESXi builds in the past, but my last server was maxed out at 32 gigabytes of RAM and using a ZFS um, operating system as one of the virtual machines tied with uh, a lot of storage. I just needed more RAM. And this puppy supports up to 128 gigabytes, which I'll probably start with 64 um, and then eventually work my way up to 120 if I find that I need it. So 10 gigabit ports, two of them. Also have a standard one gigabit ethernet ports. An IPMI, which for those of you who don't know what IPMI is, it basically lets you boot the motherboard over the network. It kind of lets you control the motherboard, power it on and off. Uh, without actually being present where the board is, which is nice in a server board. Uh, just only two USB 3.0 ports on the front, but it does have three USB 2.0 ha fan headers in the front. It also has an M2 slot right here, so we're able to put some really fast PCIe, NVMe storage there, um, which will help the file server going forward. And if you want to see the other parts, the build is in progress, but let's take a look over here. This little guy right here, which I hope you can see in the video, it's actually very small. And those are oh, two 120 millimeter fans, and that's as tall as the case is at all. This is the Silverstone DS380B. And it locks here, the power button locks if you want it to. Um, but it's a nice little case. I have it pulled out right now for the purpose of building the machine. But uh, it does have uh, hot pluggable SATA drives, uh, eight 3.5 inches on this drive cage. And then internally, it will support uh, four SSDs inside is what well four 2.5 inch drives which i'll be using ssds but you don't have to on the front there power and reset button two usb 3 point ports in the front but i'll be using an adapter and using those as usb 2.0 because there's no 3.0 motherboard header but mini itx case it requires an sfx power supply and i chose the sf450 corsair which I looked into Silverstone's own power supply, but it seemed like from what I read, if you have your uh, drive bay loaded up, it sometimes didn't have enough amperage to run this drive bay unless you got really particular models. Uh, but this supports 20 amps on the 5 volt rail, which should be fine for powering the drives. So that's why I went with this Corsair. Plus it was, you know, had better reviews, frankly. Uh, so that's good. And we'll just need to be able to power four SSDs in this top corner. Uh, probably start out with two at first um, and then power the back plane of the eight three and a half inch drives. I'd like to max that out with uh, the new 10 terabyte Iron Wolf drives, but we'll see how far I get there. I'll have to start with just a few of those and then work my way up. Uh, I've taken the fans out of this case because I've opted to go for these Noctua NFF12 Industrial PPC 2000 PWM 
capable headers. They have, well, A, they're super nice fans. They are, you know, Noctua's really, really nice. And the fans that came with the case are adequate, um, but these will actually spin a little bit faster. The fans that came with the case max out at 1200 RPM. This will go up to 2000, but it will also only go up to 2000 when things get really hot. I'm really pushing the box. Um, and since it's PWM, it should be able to control it right off the motherboard headers. So uh, this is the initial phase of this box. Oh, also, I'll be using to boot ESXi 6.0 using this little SanDisk thumb drive, which is very small, and that will go right on the front. And it's so small, it actually lets the door close, even when that's out. This is, a, I believe, a Cruiser Fit. And uh, so, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this build. It will enable me to really hit virtualization hard. I already have a ZFS server that I'm using, but this is going to replace it. And it's really going to, you know, let me expand my storage and support a lot more virtual machines for uh, various purposes. Uh, Plex Media Server, uh, websites, all kinds of different things that I'll be using this for. All in a very teeny case, you know, 16 usable apparent cores, 8, eight actual processors in this little box with up to... 80 terabytes of three and a half inch storage and then however many SSDs you want to stack in the back. That is a crazy amount of power in something that small running on a 450 watt power supply. So anyways, this is just part one of the server build. Once I have things a little bit further along, I'll walk you through uh, some of the different things that I'm doing with it and show you the completed build as we go. So thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll keep you posted. Thanks.